So Ralph um, and his team arranged major, major photographic exhibitions around the world. And he started photographing when he was living in Tokyo back in um, the year 2000. Ralph, we just missed each other. I was there 2002. Um, developing black and white film by hand. So he is a man with many hobbies. Um, and we were just talking earlier about how this list is not conclusive. He's a passionate photographer, hiker, skier, traveler, and Lindy hop dancer. Um, I would also like to throw Yogi into the mix and perhaps a few other things, but I'll leave that to Ralph. Um, so without further ado, uh, take it away, Ralph. Thank you very much, Quiva. Stop my screen sharing here. Okay, here we go. Good morning, everyone. I'm really honored and glad to be here today because um, being divergent is something that lies really close to my heart and it's very personal to me. This is Creative Mornings. And if you know me, you would know I'm not a morning person at all. So I'm... Uh, I think this tells how much this means to me doing this. I have really a lot to say about this topic, but I will try to stay focused and not diverge too much. Divergent means being different, to stand out from the crowd, break through the noise, to swim against the stream, to be on a certain path, but then suddenly change direction and journey into unmapped territory. Here, I will show you an image um, which shows what I'm talking about. You have the big mainstream line and then the divergent. Quickly about my background. My father was a lawyer uh, my father, my father was a doctor, actually, and he wanted me to be a doctor as well. And my mother, she wanted me to be a lawyer, like both her parents were. Well, I chose a different path. After four years of law school, I decided to drop out to start another creative community, onenext.com. Together with my childhood friend Jacob. I think this slide will describe the situation. Law school, wacky art project. Here's another slide describing the same thing. Bright future, complete uncertainty. Jacob was executive manager at the medtech company, but he quit his office job so we could try our own wings. This was back in 2007, when Instagram was not yet conceived and Facebook was just a toddler. The giants among photo communities were known as Flickr, Photo.net and Photocommunity.de. At that time, there was no site for really good and artistic photography. And that's why we started One X. We had the vision to bring all the best photographers in the world together in one place. Here you can see someone with a vision. And here you will see some of these photographers. Maybe this one. We tried to achieve this vision by curating every photo uploaded to the site and only publishing the real gemstones photos that really make you feel. In the beginning, the only members of the site were I and Jacob, so we only had each other's photos to judge. And uh, you can imagine this led to some quite heated discussions. But luckily, we're still friends after 14 years. Three years after we started One X, we had over 20 million visitors a month twice the population of the country I was born in. At that time, we were most likely the second biggest photo website in the world. 
One X is both a job and a passion project. And some of the biggest highlights from this journey was our 10 years anniversary exhibition, 425 meters above ground level in one of the tallest, tallest buildings in the world. The, yeah, here's the elevator. You can see it's 425 meters, floor 94. It was in the Shanghai World Financial Center. Here's our uh, exhibition, taking up the entire observation deck of the building. Another great highlight was when we were invited to arrange a photo exhibition in this building, the UN headquarters. The United Nations invited us to make an exhibition in New York for World Water Day. Here I'm giving an opening speech at the exhibition. Now, I'm going to ask you a really tricky question. What popular beliefs that everyone holds for true are actually false? I want you to think about this for a moment. I'm going to come back to this question many times. And I'm going to talk about how this question relates to art, business, and technology. And I'm also going to get a tiny tad political. When making this presentation, I realized there's a bunch of D words that are closely linked to being divergent. These are different, dedicated, disruptive, developing, defiant, daring, and dreaming. And first out is different. This image is called Go Your Own Way, and it's made by very accomplished photographer and digital artist, Eric Johansson. Speaking of being different, I just have to quote the old Think Different campaign by Apple. It goes like this. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. I think this quote says it all about being different. However, being opposite without a reason just for the sake of being different is not what we're talking about here. For example, here in Sweden, we drive on the left side of the road and if you would drive on the, we drive on the right side, of course, here in Sweden. <laughs> Not like uh, the UK where you drive on the left side. So if you would drive on the left side of the road here in Sweden, we would drive on the right side, you would not be different in a good way. In photography, if you're just breaking the rules, just for the sake of breaking them, you're not necessarily creating groundbreaking art. In recent world events, we have seen what seems to be protesting just for the sake of protesting. Violent demonstrations out of pure malcontent, challenging the very foundations of democracy. It's not enough just being opposite. You need to be different with a purpose and for a good reason. Dedicated. Anything can be an art. Painting, sculpturing, dancing, arranging flowers, cooking food. Science can be an art. 
Some mathematical formulas are said to be extraordinarily beautiful and even artistic in their simplicity. It doesn't matter what you do. Even cleaning up your room can be an art, just as Japanese cleaning artist Marie Kondo. If there's one way to define what makes an artist, it's caring about your work and never giving up. Every rejection is just a step on the road to perfection. Here in Sweden, a popular belief is that it's bad to fail. Failure is something embarrassing you better hide and don't want to talk about. In Silicon Valley, however, they have the motto, fail fast. This means that if you fail, it's nothing to be ashamed of, but rather something valuable, which shows that you have experience. It's when we fail, we really learn. Everyone will face hardship in their life sooner or later. And if we never fail, we won't be able to handle it. Philip Tussander, one of the most success successful entrepreneurs in Sweden, who started the watch brand Daniel Wellington, tried seven different businesses before he found the one that really took off. J.K. Rowling, author of Harry Potter, was rejected 12 times. Rowling says, it's impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. Talking about determination, a couple of days ago, I met up with Matthias Klum, the world-renowned nature photographer to see his ongoing exhibition at the Fotografiska, the photo museum here in Stockholm. Matthias told me that back in 97, he spent 14 months in Borneo chasing a rare creature, the elusive silverleaf monkey, the holy grail of monkeys. After waiting in different hideouts for months, he finally made the perfect shot and become the first Swede and one of the youngest people ever to make it to the front cover of this magazine. Since then, his photos have been featured on the cover no less than 12 times. A popular belief is that you can skip all the hard work and jump straight to success if you just have the right idea. But in reality, being successful takes a ton of time hard work, and very big sacrifices. Disruptive. Let's talk about fruit. In 1983, the same year I was born, by the way, a very disruptive device was released, the Lisa. It was the first computer with a graphical interface and a mouse. It was named after Steve Jobs' daughter. Apple did not really invent this, though, but were rather inspired by a demonstration at Xerox in 79. For Xerox, this machine was mostly a gimmick they never intended to bring to the consumer market, while Steve Jobs saw the enormous potential nobody else did. A popular belief is that being disruptive is creating something totally unheard of, completely out of the blue. But in reality, innovation is built on previous innovation. Speaking of apples, already in 1675, Isaac Newton said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Innovation, be it in business, art or science, require inspiration. Being genius, means understanding what to be inspired by. A clearly disruptive product was the iPhone. Here you see one. The yellow one is in there. Completely outcompeting the Nordic mobile phone giants, Ericsson and Nokia. Even though Nokia lost the smartphone race, they should be given some credit for making big transitions. 
It is a company that, believe it or not, started making tar and were later well known for the rubber boots and tires. Funnily enough, in the beginning, owning an iPhone was a hip and cool lifestyle product that made you stand out. But today, you're more divergent if you're using an old Nokia. This means that after a while, the trend becomes the mainstream and you need to constantly reinvent yourself. We have changed course here at One X many times. We started out with the photo homepage. We started making photo art books. We made photo learning books, digital photo tutorials, wallpaper apps. We have sold posters and frames. We have made personal homepages, exhibitions, you name it. Since I'm into photography, I also have to mention Kodak. This company was started already in the 1800s. At their peak in 76, they controlled 90% of the American film market and 85% of the American camera market. At the top, they had an entire 145,000 employees. In 96, they had their peak and controlled two thirds of the global market. And their brand ranked number five most valuable, valuable brand in the entire world. But in 2012, they suddenly went bankrupt because nobody used film anymore and everyone were starting to use digital cameras. The funny thing is that Kodak developed the first handheld digital camera already in 1975, but they kept holding on to what they knew best, film photography. And this proved to be a dead end. Tesla released its first electric car in 2008. Tesla is now worth more than Volkswagen, Toyota, Nissan, GM, Ford, in fact, more than the nine biggest car companies combined. But how innovative are they really? Do you know when the first electric car was built? In 1890. Making electric cars was up for grabs more than 120 years before Elon Musk launched his Tesla Roadster into orbit around the sun. It's interesting to think about what sounds kids of future generations won't be able to recognize. The whizzing of an analog camera shutter, the clinking of a typewriter, the swooshing of an old telephone with a rotary dial, the roaring of a gas engine, and the rattling of coins in your pocket when nobody uses cash anymore. I'm into Linda Hop. A couple's dance, dance to 1920s jazz music. In the Linda Hop community, there's a constant debate about keeping the authentic original style versus dancing in a more modern way. In photography, it's the same with a purist camp who detests overly photoshopped images and vice versa. The funny thing is that when dancing back in the 20s, 1920s that is, Lindy Hop was highly experimental, modern and innovative. And it was the same when the analog camera technique was invented. You would actually be surprised how much you can do in a dark room that you may think can only be done in Photoshop. For example, this image I made of my father was completely created in the dark room without using Photoshop. People and organizations who manage to adapt, transition and continue to disrupt are the most successful in the long run. Being divergent is not just being different. It also includes a change of direction. 
Dali was not painting surreal paintings in his mother's womb, and Picasso was not making cubist sculptures in there. They first mastered regular painting and sculpture, and then turned into their respective directions. Developing. I like this picture. The researcher and doctor Hans Rosling points out in his book Factfulness that contrary to popular belief, many world problems are actually getting better. When it comes to reducing poverty in the world, improving the health care and lifetime expectancy and education, we're moving in the right direction. Stock markets are, as we speak, close to an all time high and technological advancements are quicker than ever. A vaccine has been developed in record time, only nine months, instead of maybe 10 years, which it used to take. A totally amazing achievement that will save countless of lives. Progress has given us amazing things, but at what cost? Unlike the popular belief, progress is not always something good. When it comes to the destruction of our environment, global warming, extinction of species and diminishing freshwater supplies is looking worse and worse. In fact, if we don't change this and stop damaging natural habitats of wild animals, this will get worse. If we don't damage natural habitats, wild animals, they're much less likely to come in contact with tame animals, which means that they can transmit viruses and pandemics are much less likely to happen. While the vaccines are remarkable accomplishments, perhaps we wouldn't have needed them at all if it didn't destroy our environment in the first place. Planet Earth, is the most beautiful art piece we know of in the universe, and we should protect it. The world economy is built on increasingly big loans, which means that constant economic growth is necessary to pay those off sometime in the future. Advertising is designed to keep us constantly dissatisfied, while the solution to having the happy life in TV is buying just another product. Overconsumption is taking a big toll on our planet. What about mental health? Personal development can be something positive if it means personal growth and spiritual enlightenment. But this constant race to improve ourselves, isn't that one of the most stressful things in our lives? You want the perfect job, always move up the career ladder, make more money. You're expected to look great, both when it comes to wearing the right clothes to blend in be accepted and make an impression. And you should also have time to work out hard to have an athletic body. You should be a god in the kitchen and be the perfect parent. You're also expected to be happy. The truth is that our time is limited. It's hard to be both gorgeous looking a wildly successful business person, a helicopter pilot, a concert pianist. You're expected to be a world traveler, a caring partner, and a perfect parent with a perfect home and an impressive social life. Excelling in any area takes a huge amount of time, commitment, and sacrifice. If you read a hundred different books about improving your life, Imagine how much you could have done with all that time instead. Trust me on this, I have read a few. Our motto for 1x is in pursuit of the sublime. 
This means striving for perfection. The important word here though is pursuit and not sublime. It means always seeking to improve, to develop, to get better, increase quality and never stop trying. Gladwell has said that in 10,000 hours, you can become world class in any field. But you should realize that this means three hours a day for nine years, weekends included. So you have to choose a few areas to do this in. If you're jealous of someone who's very successful or skilled in some area, think about how much time that person has sacrificed to get to that level. And are you really willing to do the same? Defiant. A common belief is that positive feelings are the only good or acceptable feelings and that all other feelings should be suppressed. The truth is that we have a spectrum of different feelings and they're all there for a reason. It's okay to be angry, sad or jealous. I think it's important to embrace all our feelings to be able to understand what we're feeling, solve any problems and then hopefully move on to more happy thoughts. Suppressing half of your emotional life, pretending to be positive and happy all the time will rather lead to the opposite. Being extroverted is the ideal nowadays. And many believe extroverted people are more successful. Being an introvert, like I am, is not in fashion. Many introverts feel that we need to put on a facade and play a role in order to be accepted rather than being appreciated for who we are. The truth is that there are many very successful introverts like Albert Einstein, Gandhi, JK Rowling, Elon Musk and Barack Obama. There's a lot of talk nowadays about getting out of your comfort zone. And indeed, we need to do this from time to time to make an impact. But it's a common misconception that we should do this all of the time. We can't always be in an uncomfortable place. We need our comfort zone to feel well. We should choose when to leave it and for a cause that really matters. For me, having this talk is being a bit out of my comfort zone, but uh, this is one of those moments when it's really worth it. I have read many books and been to many inspirational lectures claiming that we should always keep a positive attitude and say yes to everything so we never miss out on any opportunities. On the contrary, I think there's nothing more important than saying no. When saying no, we're show, showing who we really are. Saying no tells what our values are, what we'll not accept, and where we'll draw the line. Never compromise with your values. Even if you have a very tempting opportunity, it's not worth it if it changes who you are and how you perceive yourself in a negative way. Say no more often. It turns out that saying no to photographers, publishing only a few gemstones and rejecting most photographs is not always the best strategy to build the biggest user base. But we believe that getting honest critique is the best way to develop as a photographer and far more valuable than just getting thousands of likes and nice photo comments, which are really not that helpful. Even though there are now other photo sites far bigger than 1x, 
we're holding on to this belief. Unlike those other sites posting thousands or millions of photos every day, we only publish the few we find truly inspirational. We don't want to be trendy because we want to promote photos without an expiration date. When we develop our site, we don't use standard templates, which are quicker and cheaper, but make all sites look the same. Instead, we do our own design to fit our artistic vision and to be unique. We choose not to compromise with quality because we believe that our site is a work of art in itself. One time we got a very generous and tempting offer about an advertising campaign from a big Chinese telecom manufacturer. It was the kind of offer that would have made a major difference for our business and it would have made it possible for us to afford several projects we have dreamt of doing for a long time but never had the resources for. But in the end, we had to say no because it goes against our artistic vision to put ads in our art gallery and because this company's values were not in line with ours. I think showing moral courage is unfortunately something quite rare and divergent. Stand up against injustice. Stand up for what you believe in. A great example of someone who did this is another introverted person, Rosa Parks, who by refusing to give up her seat on the bus, the white man changed the course of history. If you see someone being mistreated or harassed, who is in need of help, don't just pass by thinking it's not my problem. We often avoid conflict because we're scared or indifferent. When someone is in trouble, it seems more people will take out their phone to film it rather than doing anything. But it's all our duty to be brave, speak up and help out. Even the smallest gesture of kindness or support can make a big difference to someone. Daring. Leap of Faith by Eric Johansson. Fear of the unknown is one of our most basic fears. But without diverging into unknown territory, we'll never discover something new. Being different can be dangerous, but if you're not afraid, you're not being brave. Sometimes we need to get out of our comfort zone and that takes courage. In this photo, I'm taking the leap, bungee jumping from the third highest bungee jump in the world, the Contra Dam in Switzerland, 220 meters. Before jumping up from this platform, they tell you to put a big smile on your face, but I think uh, I more likely had a face of terror. When bungee jumping, the scariest part is not falling, but jumping out from the platform. Here's another crazy one. As you know, only dead penguins swim with the stream. It takes courage to be the first to dive into uncharted water, but it will be inspirational and others will soon follow. Actually, that crazy penguin was me just two days ago when I was bathing in a hole in the ice. This is a good tip for someone like me who is not a morning person and need a boost and I can promise that you will really wake up if you do this. Dreaming. Joining this morning 
you're already part of a creative community and you probably already know what I'm talking about. So don't stop being a square peg in a round hole. Dream big and choose your own path. The world needs more people like you. Thank you very much. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. That was incredible. Um, my only complaint is that you finished. <laughs> <laughs> it was so enjoyable. What a pleasure to listen to your take on Divergent. Um, so inspired and also just encouraged. Um, thank you for all your efforts and for sharing your take. Um, I know that we will have a million questions for you now. So um, if we have any in the chat, can the CM team shout them out? And I'm going to jump into the Miro board and see what's going on in there. Um, any in the chat, guys? No questions in the chat so far. We have some, some questions in the Miro board. Oh, super cool. OK, let me get in there. <clears throat> right, Ralph, you ready for it? I think people are going to probably we're just watching your presentation. So we'll start writing them in now. Um, yeah. What's your driving force to keep doing what you were doing, Ralph? Uh, sorry? What is your driving force? Like, what's your motivation or the thing that keeps you going to keep doing what you're doing? I think it actually has to do with our vision from the start that I told about. Um, finding and bringing together all the best photographers in the world. So. We have constantly tried to improve the quality level and the artistic level of 1x. And uh, I think this is my main um, driving force to uh, just um, getting the artistic level higher and higher so everyone can be even more inspired from each other and together take it to another step. And it's also to help photographers to uh, develop uh, more and more and learn from each other. And so I think that's, that's my main driving force. That's what makes me um, wake up in the morning and want to go to this job. If it was just about selling posters or anything that, like that, it wouldn't feel very meaningful. I think it's probably so inspiring for many of us to see that you have merged, like truly merged your passion with such an exciting job as such, inverted commas around job, and to create something which is not just satisfying to you, but truly a community and something which inspires so many people. And I'm personally just so inspired by um, what you do. I, to, to everybody listening, I know Ralph, but I didn't know that much about 1X and you're the origins of it. And um, so it's been really interesting to hear. Um, guys, anyone else? I saw that Yvette has her hand raised. Yvette, do you want to shout out your question to Ralph? Um, we have some other questions in the board if Yvette is just taking her time there. Um, uh, What's I can just quickly say that that another driving force is that it's very exciting to because every morning I don't know what's going to be in my inbox. For example, when we were invited by the United Nations to do this exhibition um, in, in New York, totally out of the blue, um, that was uh, really exciting and um, uh, when you wake up, things like that might be in your inbox. So that's also something that uh, really makes me continue doing this. That I never know what's going to happen the next day. I absolutely love that. I have a question for you on that because I have a theory about why these things happen. Why, like, how how do you think those things happen? Like the unexpected gems. Not like that is a wonderful experience, and I know. It, not that it is better than your everyday activities, helping photographers and creating this community, but 
what's your take on why those things happen or how what makes them happen the unexpected things yeah we had we had quite a lot of encounters like that actually in 2010 um, when we had so much traffic uh, so many visitors we were um, contacted by bessemer venture partners the oldest um, investment firm in the united states uh, we're very big uh, investment firm who invested in skype and uh, other big companies um, that was also something very exciting that mm -hmm. came out of nowhere. Uh, I think it actually has to do with uh, with uh, this blending of technology and art and all the amazing uh, art and all the amazing photographers in one next. This is um, somehow like a magnet that attracts people from uh, many different places. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a certain um, magic in this art and also um, that we're selecting the art and it's not just anything, it's really very carefully selected and it's at such a high level. I think that's something very interesting to many people and that's why they come in contact with us. And then I think generally in life, you, if you're just looking out, you will get this kind of uh, opportunities. The, the trick is to recognize them when they happen, these uh, chance encounters, and uh, really, really use them. I, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to add in my own opinion, which is not necessarily what you said, but I think it's also when you continue to move forward, no matter even if you cannot see what is in front of you. And you guys, your story just demonstrates that to me so much. You're constantly innovating, yet sticking to your principles. And personally, my experience is that sometimes if you just keep charging forward, good things or incredible things will happen. You just never know that it's like being dynamic and you just embody that, I think, personally and also with your work. Um, do we? I have one question for you, Ralph, which has popped up. Your partner, which you started, uh, you mentioned Jacob, 1X with, are you guys similar in personality or are you more different and complementary to each other? Because you started 1X, is it 2013 or previous to that? It was in 2007, actually. So we've been doing this for 14 years. That's an, such an achievement. And you guys have stayed as partners, not yes. only that's that's quite incredible actually <laughs> yeah do you guys what are what are your personalities like and your skill sets even as well i think we're i think we're both uh, similar and complementary uh, we were childhood friends and we were seven years old so we obviously get along really well and know each other on a personal level and um, um Jacob is the tech uh, wizard, mm -hmm. so he has the programmed everything and he's uh, running the site. Um, and I'm more the business entrepreneur person. I think in, in one way that we're different is that um, uh, I'm more the, the entrepreneur who tries to um, uh, expand the business and the driving force. and uh he's more doing all the programming and also all of the design he's actually a very good uh designer as well but we're both uh, big uh, photo enthusiasts so we're definitely similar in that way and uh, i think in uh, in personality we're also quite similar a really good demonstration of how there needs to be a balance a, a level of similarity and and if you have a shared passion and shared drive yet different skill sets i know we hear it all the time but it's it's the only way that you could make such a successful business um for such a yeah. long period of time and have that longevity um guys I think we're balancing each other out quite well uh, maybe i have some more uh, crazy ideas and uh, things which are quite hard to do in the reality in in a, uh, any limited amount of time. <laughs> I, 
um, it's great that you're aware as well of what um, your similarities and differences are and um, the scope of each of your roles I know is massive I think for two people to with your team to run such a massive um, project is the wrong word um, creation is really mm -hmm. phenomenal um, guys we are coming approaching the end of our session together with Ralph for anyone who joined halfway or for anyone who want, like me wants to re-watch this, we are recording it, so we'll share that. So don't worry, we will share the recording and you can watch back over Ralph's um, presentation. Um, we can probably take one more question or, you know, we have a community board section. So in the mirror board, guys, um, we're going to leave the mirror board active for a while. So you can also add any questions that occur to you afterwards for Ralph and we will share those with Ralph. And if he has time, um, he, he might be able to uh, share the answers and we will post those into our Instagram stories. Also make sure that you get into the community board so you can make any announcements that you would like to make um, to the community. Like if you are looking for a job or you are arranging a, a super cool event or you have just listened to to a life-changing podcast, something like that. Make sure you share it in there. And again, we'll share on Instagram stories. So that's where you can check that out. And then there are all links as to how you can contact us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, LinkedIn. And if you would like to join our team, please let us know. Um, and just get on there and check out Ralph's contact details as well. So you can get onto onex.com. You can get him on his Instagram and uh, LinkedIn. Um, you can also contact us if you're finding it hard and we'll we'll connect you guys together. So um, guys, what would be super cool is, because I see we don't have any extra questions just now, is if you could all do screens on and we can take a group shot with Ralph. Um, and I'm going to say just to thank you on behalf of everybody. Ralph, thank you so much for that immense sharing this morning um, for all your time and effort and energy to put that together for us to really help us to look at our like look at our lives differently, not only the theme of divergence. Um, it's been truly phenomenal and really just value you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really learned a lot myself uh, making this presentation. <laughs> oh, thank <laughs> you. I thinking about this topic. Uh, it's very it was really fun to be here. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Ralph. Um, guys, cameras on last second, and then we will do a, a group screenshot together. It doesn't matter what your hair looks like. Just get your camera on. And we go <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Great. Thank you, guys. Um, so that is the end of our event with Ralph. Like I said, make sure you watch back the video. We'll be posting it in a, a week or so. That will be on our homepage. Um, thank you to everybody who joined. Reach out to us during the month. Um, if you have any questions on anything um, and have an incredible day. It looks like spring has sprung here in Stockholm. So what a great start to the day. Thank you and see you guys next month. Thank you, Ralph. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.